you play your cards right, you're going to live for another hour. If you don't keep quiet, I can arrange to cut that down to about 30 seconds. Take your choice. Theater 5 presents the $245,000 Smile. Take a look through these, Miss Johnson. They're really the cream of Acme Escort's crop. Mm. Oh, now, this young man here, does he come close to the description I gave you? Oh, let me see. Dark hair, brown eyes, height 5 feet 11, weight 170 pounds. I'm sorry, Miss Townsend. He's too short and too light. He just won't do. Oh, well, perhaps one of these others. Here, now, this young man looks as if he might fill the bill. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Mr. Fredrickson. He's leaving us next week. He's being married. But I just want a young man for tonight. I won't need him after that. Oh. There's no possibility that you might want to uh, use him again after tonight. None at all. Oh. Well, the particulars are on the back of the photograph. Fredrickson, Charles, six feet one, 190 pounds, dark hair, brown eyes, 32 years old. Oh, Miss Townsend, he's not smiling in the picture. Does he have good teeth? Huh? Oh, why, yes. Then I think he'll do just fine. Oh, very good. May I have your home address, Miss Johnson? Don't bother to send a bill. I'll pay in cash. Now, uh, this will cover it, won't it? Oh, yes, but don't you want Mr. Fredrickson to call for you at your home? <laughs> Well, since we've never met and I live alone, I'd, uh, I'd really rather that I met him in some public place. Would you ask him to take a table in the Pompeian room at 6.30 this evening? I'll recognize him from the photograph. Uh, it's a bit irregular, but oh, I'm sure it can be arranged. Thank uh, you very much, Miss Townsend. Oh, you're absolutely certain about the teeth. Oh, we call Mr. Fredrickson the man with the million-dollar smile. <laughs> I'm afraid it won't be worth quite that much to me, but it is very important to me that he have perfect teeth. You know, the kind that you can just look at and know that he's never had a cavity in his life? Why, that fits Mr. Fredrickson to a T. <laughs> or should I say to a tooth? Uh, oh. <clears throat> oh, please, forgive the little joke. I didn't realize you were so serious. I am, Miss Townsend. Deadly serious. Would you care for another, Miss Johnson? I uh, think I would, thank you. Oh, uh, Miss? Yes, sir. Uh, two scotch and sodas, please. Certainly. There's no reason to thank me, Miss Johnson. It's your money. Oh, yes. Yes, so it is. May I ask you a personal question? Of course. What's a lovely girl like you doing in a situation like this? I beg your pardon? I mean, uh, hiring an escort. Oh. Well, as I explained to Miss Townsend, I've, I've just come to Los Angeles. I really don't know a soul, and I don't like to go to the theater alone, and I want to see the new comedy at the Playhouse. You think I can get tickets? Oh, the escort bureau can. I'll just give Miss Townsend a call. And, well, that is if, uh, now that you've looked me over, you think I'm suitable. I'm... I'm almost certain that you'll be fine, Charles. Almost? <laughs> well, I have to admit that I'm still a little uncomfortable, but it, it has... It hasn't anything to do with you personally. Well, that's comforting to hear. I mean it. In fact, I'm beginning to regret that this is going to be our one and only evening together. Oh? Miss Townsend told me that you're going to be married next week. Oh. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you. It's a peculiar conversation for two people planning an evening together, isn't it? Who knows? It may turn out to be a peculiar evening. Here you are, sir. 
two scotches and soda. Oh, thank you, miss. Oh, oh, uh, don't take my glass, please. Well, whatever you say. Oh, oh sorry. It's a habit I've had left over from my childhood. I, I can't resist ice cubes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Charles. You you have to excuse me. Oh, I, I hope my bad manners haven't changed your plans for the evening. Not a single one of them. I, I just remembered a phone call I have to make. Excuse me. I'll be back in a minute. You wouldn't have left for the apartment yet. Honey, I've got things to clear up here at the office. You've been looking over these gigolos for almost a week now. Why should tonight be any different from any other night? Because I've found him, that's why. Call Louis and tell him he's earning his five grand tonight. Harry, he looks enough like you to be your twin brother. Six, one, hundred and ninety pounds. How old is he? Thirty-two. Nice, dark, wavy hair and brown eyes. Now, don't get too enthusiastic. He's not going to be around for that long. Why don't you get over to the apartment and see for yourself? You mean you're calling from the apartment? Ah, don't be silly. I'm in the Pompeii room. Can you be in the apartment in 20 minutes? I'll try. We'll try extra hard, pussycat. If I have to feed him another drink, he'll need to be carried out. That comes later. Okay. <laughs> okay, now I'll tell him I have to change clothes before we go out on the town. We'll be at the apartment about the same time you are, huh? If I'm a little late, stall him. Uh, wait a minute, honey. How are his teeth? His teeth are fine. Now, will you head for home? Or can't you even be on time for your own funeral? I have to apologize for the way the apartment looks, Charles. It's just a hotel-type furniture, and I haven't had the time to fix it up. Well, don't worry about it. I'm paid to ignore my surroundings and uh, concentrate on you. Oh. oh, dear. Now, now, where did my key get to? If you find it, it won't fit this door. The nameplate says Owens. Oh. Oh, Johnson was my maiden name. Oh. Here we are. You're married? Well, I was. I'd... Rather not talk about it. Now, why don't you get some ice and soda out of the kitchen while I go in and uh, pick out a dress? Hmm? Well, you're the boy. You bet your life I am, Sonny. Now, if you're still there, Harry, I'll kill you. <laughs> I've made my decision about the way I'm going to look, Charles. Now, what have you done about the way I'm going to feel, hmm? Ah, here you are. To our one and only evening together. Well, if you don't do something about getting dressed, we're going to have to spend it in a movie house. <laughs> well, now, I'm not worried. Why should you be? Now, who could that be? What? Harry, what are you doing here? Well, I was in the neighborhood and just thought I'd drop by. Uh, may I come in? Oh, well, well, of course. Oh, I, I, I'd like you to meet Mr. Fredrickson. Charles, this is Harry Owens, my ex-husband. Oh, uh, well, uh, um, how do you do, sir? Good to know you, Charlie. Bernice, I'd say you'd found yourself a very well-set-up young man indeed. Oh, do you really think he'll do, Harry? He'll do just fine. I, I don't think I understand. Harry and I have a very civilized relationship, Charles. He just wants to have a, a look at you. That's all. Would you mind turning around for a moment, Charlie? Well, not at all, but I... Oh! <coughs> Did you have to hit him that hard? Suppose you fractured his skull. I hit him on top of the head. It'll look as if it happened in the accident. <laughs> what 
are you doing? Turning him over. Why? We can tie him up just as easily, just the way he is. I oh. want to have a look at his teeth. You and your million-dollar smile. If you hadn't got the idea that you could sell anybody anything, we wouldn't be in this mess. Well, we're in it, and the only way we're going to get out of it is to have the police believe they found my body. And if there's anything wrong with these teeth, I'm a dead duck. Oh. How are they? Perfect. <laughs> They'll last him all his life. <laughs> Sure, they said this guy weighs 190. Oh, it feels more like 250. You're out of shape. <sighs> Say, I don't see why he has to go in my closet. Why don't we leave him in the middle of the living room where we can keep an eye on him? Even with a gag in his mouth, he might make some noise when he comes to. <clears throat> Your closet's got enough clothes in it to muffle any racket. I hate those clothes cost a lot of money. My insurance will pay for lots of new ones. <clears throat> 250,000 beautiful dollars. 245,000. Don't forget your hired killer. Okay, okay, okay. Once we collect, you can have all the clothes you want. Remember, for the next month or two, you're going to be getting by in your basic black. Did you buy the clothesline? It's been on the kitchen table for a week. All right, keep an eye on him. I think I saw his eyelids fluttering. Just take it easy, lover. What do you think you're doing? Harry! Anything wrong? He's coming too, pussycat. <laughs> oh, hello there, Charlie boy. You see this? It's a great big gun, and if you don't lie nice and quiet, it's going to put you to sleep again. Now put out the footsies. There we go. Yeah, the hands... You won't get away with it. Ah, 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 silence is golden. <clears throat> that does it. Now, over on your side. Put your nose against the bottom of the door and you'll get plenty of air. Can't have you coming to an untimely end. Ah, that's that. Another hour and Louie will be here and we can get him down the back stairs and into the car. <laughs> Lovely car. It's a shame to burn it. Honey, we've been through this whole bit. There's no other way. If I don't disappear, I'll be in jail in a week. Well, don't say it as if it were my fault. It was your idea to let that sweet little old lady buy part of your oil well. How was I to know her husband was the district attorney? That's not the point, Harry. All was before there was an oil well or a uranium mine, even if you were selling the stock for more than it was worth. This was grand larceny, not fraud. Which is exactly why we have to do this. We could go to South America. Uh-uh. They've got extradition treaties now. Why the sudden change of heart? Has Charlie's charm gotten to you? I'm not worried about him, Harry. I'm worried about you. What do you know about pulling off a murder? You've been a confidence man since you got your second teeth. You can't beat the gas chamber with a million-dollar smile. I'm still living by my wits. I'm just living a little more dangerous. Where are you going? I'm going to mix you a drink. It's the best thing in the world for a case of cold feet. Uh. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mrs. Owens and I were moving a trunk, but it can wait till tomorrow. I'm very sorry. We were What? Our guest. He's been kicking his heels on the floor or something. Well, we'll see about that. Harry, you can't use the gun. Can't I? <laughs> All right, Buster. Listen to me and listen hard. If you play your cards right, you're going to live for another hour or so. But if you don't keep quiet, I can arrange to cut that down to about 30 seconds. Take your choice. <laughs> Water a soda, pussycat. Water's okay. Here you are. Thank you. 
Did you check on Charlie? Yeah, I just did, 10 or 15 minutes ago. He's not going anywhere. What time is it? A quarter after eight. Shouldn't Louie be here by now? He said he might be a little late. What are you so anxious about? I thought you didn't want to go through with it. I just want to get it over with. All right, all right, all right. Take it easy. Are you sure you thought of everything? I always think of everything. Wallet, driver's license, wedding ring. How do you know the wedding ring will fit him? If it doesn't, who can prove it from the ashes? Now, you won't forget to put your wristwatch on it. Will you get off my back? I told you I've thought of everything. The whole plan was perfect when I thought of it, and it's still perfect. You know what they say about the best laid plans. Say, are you still trying to talk me out of this? I wish I could. Well, forget it. Everything's done. I've got my plane ticket, the fake identification, and all the money I'll need to sit still for six months in Mexico City. Everything's done except killing him. How will you feel about that? That. I don't have to watch. Besides, I don't have any alternative. We haven't committed murder yet. So what? We're guilty of kidnapping. Which would you rather get the death penalty for, kidnapping or arranging a murder? All right, Harry. I'll go through with my end of it. Good. You can start by throwing a couple of shirts and some underwear in my attaché case. You could say at least please. Please. And thanks for the drink. Harry, will you please not do that? Well, it never bothered you before. Huh? Well, it does tonight. I'm sorry. Will two shirts be enough? Sure. Harry! For the love of Pete, honey, will you hold it down? He's gone. What? Have you gone out of your mind? He can't be... Checked the ropes no more than 20 minutes ago. He must have had a knife in his pocket. Look under the bed, Harry. Yeah. He's got to be under the bed. Yeah. Yeah. He's gone. He must have crawled along the window ledge and jumped onto the fire escape. Well, don't stand there trying to figure it out. We've probably got about one minute to get out of here. What did I do with my purse? Oh, never mind your purse. I've got all the money. Well, then let's get out. Shut up! We're going to walk out the front door just as if we were going for a walk. If we run into anybody, we just give them a nice smile. Now get hold of yourself. I'm all right. Then let's go. <gasps> Hello, Bernie. Harry. Uh, well, come on in, Charlie. It's uh, nice to see you again. Thanks. Harry, what kind of a nut are you? we got to get out of here. <laughs> Don't you see what happened, honey? The knock on the head. He's still in a fog. As soon as he got out, he came back, just like a homing pigeon. Not quite, Harry. I took time to stop at a phone booth. I thought running into me might hold you up just long enough for the police to get here. Harry, there's no time for talk. We can still get out the back. Oh, can you? And down five flights of stairs? Listen. He's right. I don't understand it. Where'd you hide the knife, Charlie? There wasn't any knife. You searched me before you tied me up, remember? I don't understand you it. You fool. You stupid, egotistical fool. The whole plan had to be just as perfect as your pearly white teeth. Don't you see what happened? He chewed his way out! Theater 5 has presented The $245,000 Smile, written by Richard Holland and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, 
Connie Lemke, Bob Dryden, Merrill Joels, and Bryna Rayburn. Audio engineer, Bill Sandreuter. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Original music by Alexander Vlas Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser.